What's going on guys, John Elder here from CodeMe.com and in this video, I'm going to show you how to use checkboxes without a button for PyQt5 and Python. Alright guys, like I said, in this video we're going to look at checkboxes without using a button. But before we get started, if you like this video and want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out CodeMe.com where I have dozens of courses with hundreds of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership with all my courses, videos, and books. One time fee is just $49, which is insanely cheap. Okay, in the last video, we looked at checkboxes and we had them set up to where you had to click the checkbox and then click a button in order to do something. In this video, I want to show you how to use just checkboxes without a button that goes along with it. So if we just check the box, something happens. If we check more than one, something else happens. So that's what we're going to look at in this video. So head over to our terminal. I'm in my C PyQt5 directory, got the virtual environment turned on, and let's open the designer. So I want to come down here and open and let's open, come to our PyQt5 directory and let's open the file we looked at in the last video. If you didn't see that video, check the comment section below for a link to the playlist. We can open this check.ui file. And when we do, here we go. We've got our little app here. I'm just going to click on the button and delete it. And then maybe we'll move this up a bit. I don't know. No big deal. Play around with this. Okay, so now I'm going to come over here and let's go file, save as. And I'm going to save this as check2. To differentiate it from check the one we worked on in the last video. So okay, let's head back over here and now we need to convert this into a Python file. So let's go PYUIC5-x. So that's Python UIC converter maybe 5 for PyQt5 x and we want to convert the check2.ui file and we want to dash o to output it and let's call this check2.python. And okay, let's go ahead and run this to make sure that works. So check two dot pi. And we do, okay, we get this little thing. Nothing actually happens, but it looks good. So, okay, let's head over to our code now. And I'm using the Sublime Text Editor in the Git Bash terminal as always. And as always, you can find a link to the code in the pinned comment section below, as well as a link to the PyQt5 playlist with all the other videos in this series. So check that out if you haven't so far. So let's go to file, open file. And we're in our C PyQt5 directory. And let's find that check two file we just created. And there it is. Now, in the last video, we looked down here for the submit button and then we created a little function for it. Well, we don't have a submit button, so how do we now deal with changes in the state of the checkbox, if they're toggled or not? Well, there's two different ways you can do it and I'll show you how. And let's see, uh, update check boxes. And anywhere inside of this main function here, we can set these two little lines of code. And you remember the names of our boxes are red checkbox, let me copy this, and blue checkbox. So I'm gonna come down here and just pop this in twice. So this one is blue checkbox. So what we can do is, well, we need to self these, so self dot. And like I said, there are two ways that you can determine whether or not a checkbox has been checked or not. You can dot state changed or you can dot toggled, right? So either of these will work. And as we'll see in a minute here, you know, in the last video, we talked about state change, where if it's not clicked, it's zero. If it is clicked, it's two, right? That's the state change. Toggle just means it was clicked. And we, we don't know if it was clicked on or off. We just know that it was clicked, right? So your program may need to know specifically if a thing was you know, clicked on or off, then you would use state change and you could find out if it's at a zero or a two. If you just don't care and you just wanna you know, do something whenever it's clicked, no matter what happens, you would use toggled. But either one of these really do work. So we also wanna dot connect and then we wanna do something. So I'll do that here too. Now, what do we wanna do? Well, it's just like with the submit button, we wanna call a function. And we do that using our Lambda as we always do. So L-A-M-B-D-A. Now this is a lowercase l, I know it kind of looks capitalized here, but that's just sublime text. And then we can self dot checked, or the convention is to use uh, like a button state function, something like that. But I'm just going to call this dot checked. You can call it anything you want, really. And uh, this is a function. So I'm just going to copy this, pop this in here. So now whenever any of these checkboxes are clicked, either this way or this way, we'll run this checked function, All right? So now we need to create this checked function and we can come down here and do it any old where. So I'm gonna define our checked function. We wanna pass in self as we always do. And now we can do the exact same thing we did in the last video. We can run some if statements to see whether or not our boxes were checked. 
So we could go if self dot red checkbox dot is checked, right? If that equals true, well then let's go self dot red equals, and let's just set this to red. Else we can go self dot red equals nothing. And we misspelled self here, so boom. And we could just copy this whole thing and do it again for our blue checkbox. And instead of this being red, we'll change this to blue. And this will be blue. And this will be blue. And finally, this will be blue. Okay, so that's all there is to it. Now, if we want to do something because of these, we want to change the output on the screen. Remember, if we come up here and look, our label is just called self.label. So we could set the text to that to whatever we want, like we did in the last video. So let's go self.label dot set text. And we could just create a little F string here with a couple of things here. And then we could just pass in self dot red and self dot blue. And you know, I realize this is kind of silly. We're just pasting the word red or blue up onto the screen, whether or not we've checked the box or not, but it shows you how to do anything, you know, using this logic here, this if else statement to determine whether a checkbox has been checked or not and then take some action, whatever that action is. In this case, we're just putting the thing onto the screen. But if you wanted to do something else, call a different function or do anything you want, you would do it right here or even right here. You know, if the box is checked, you might want to run the uh, it's checked function or something. We don't have anything like that, so we're not doing anything like that. But, you know, conceivably you could. So, all right, let's go ahead and save this and run it, see if that worked right. So Python check two dot pi, and we have our red, we click it, boom, it says red, we unclick it, it says nothing. We click blue, it says blue, we unclick it, it says nothing. We click both of them, we get red and blue. And that's all there's to it. Now, I will kind of mention a couple of videos ago, we did basically the same thing with radio buttons, but we did it a little bit different. If you remember, what we did is instead of when we set the, the toggled state thing here, we also passed in self dot, for instance, this would be blue checkbox, right? And then if you remember, I'll just delete that. In the function that we called, we also called B for radio button. And then inside of there, instead of calling the name of the button, we called this B. You can't really do that so much with checkboxes because if you remember, we kind of open this again, checkboxes, you can check more than one, right? Radio buttons, you cannot. So since you can only pick one radio button, we can pass in the radio button and get all kinds of stuff from it. Can't really do that here because if we click this, we, we can't pass in all the check boxes and name them all B because there might be 10 of them. There might be two of them in this case. There's more that there might be more than one. So because of that, we don't pass in the thing itself, the check box itself and label it as B. Instead, we do just what we did. We just use their actual names. We know the names of them because, you know, we created them and we're doing them right here. So we know their names. We might as well just use their names to see whether or not they're checked or not. And uh, that's kind of all there is to it. So that's how you use checkboxes without a button. Really easy. And again, just sort of keep in mind that you can use this state changed or this toggled. They're sort of similar. You can see we use both of them and you can't really tell the difference. But like I said, if you don't care whether it's been checked on or off, you can just use this toggled. Toggled means what it says. It's toggled. It's been clicked. Maybe it clicked on. Maybe it clicked off. We don't know. We can figure out whether it was clicked on or off by running this logic in here, which is what we do. But we don't have to. Uh, so just sort of keep that in mind. So that's all for this video. If you like, be sure to smash the like button below. Subscribe to the channel. Give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm. And check out codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off memberships. You pay just $49 to access all my courses, over 47 courses, hundreds of videos, and the PDFs of all my best selling coding books. Join over 150,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Elder from codemy.com, and I'll see you in the next video.